Hi friends, I got a little bit of a question on Facebook today about addressing like lip problems and different issues that you see when you are teaching beginner flutists. The first one was a question about what happens when your students have very, very full lips and she was speaking especially about full lower lip. Normally, of course, as I showed you before, I had you do the kiss, roll and conk. But if you have really full lips, that's going to practically cover the lip plate. So, or let me see if we can get like practically cover the embouchure hole. And that's not going to work for you because then you won't be able to get a sound. The ways I still really do think it should be on the bottom of your lip, but the only way I can think I can think of a couple ways. Um, one of them is to turn the embouchure hole way, way outward so that they have the chance to, because their lips are so full, they can focus the air at a fuller or at a, a farther edge. But then also you could have them simply, um, you know, do the kiss and roll. And then that'll give them the right definition. So they might not be right under their lip. They might just be like right on top of their lip a little. I can't really promise anything um, without actually seeing the instrumentalist, but I think that might be helpful for them. And there's all kinds of different lip issues. We can talk about the teardrop formation on the upper lip. We can talk about just like plain old, you know, issues with the lip. Um, I've never had someone come with a former cleft lip and palate. Um, but I'm actually quite interested in that to see what would happen. Um, if your student is determined enough to play, they will make it work. But we will, you will have to mess around with, you know, lip plate placement, rolling out, rolling in for very thin lips. Um, for me, I guess I have what my flute professor called B-flat lips, which is, you know, just boring, plain old you know, nothing special about them. So um, this works for me. I don't even need to do this anymore because I'm so used to just placing it. Um, so. <laughs> is the way we're supposed to. I have the terrible habit of squeezing my cheeks and I'm working on that actually with my long tones even though I'm 38 years old. Um, the next thing up is I want to get into holding the actual full-on instrument because I have students who can get really fantastic sounds with just the head joint, but then the motor skills of holding the instrument are different. So that's going to be on the next video. Um, I would really, really encourage you to, um, if authorized, you know, send me a video or a picture of said student because I think that we might be able to work it out and, you know, uh, do that. I would love to video chat with the student. I think that would be really super fun. Um, and I hope that this can help a little bit. Um, we'll see if anybody asks me about different embouchure formations later in future videos, we can mess around with it. But for now, the fuller lips, I think, um, Hubert Law's always either, uh, he was a super jazz flute player. He, uh, he always rolled way, way out, or he'd place it higher on his lips. Because, I mean, why not? If I place it higher, like right here, I can't do it because I don't have enough lip. But, say your students with a really full lip, they need to place it higher so that their upper lip can get, you know, where it needs to be. Because a lot of people will say pushing your lower lip forward will actually make the octave change, but that results in a very thin sound with not the most in perfect intonation. Um, so, you know, I have all these different opinions on it, but mine is still, you know, if it's a fuller lip, go ahead and move it up on the lip, maybe turn it out a little bit and see what happens. Um, I hope this helps. And so we've addressed our first problem. Um, please do leave me comments in the section. I would love to hear from you. And um, good luck fluting and make beautiful music.